Hi. Uh, so uh, this is actually uh, part two of uh, of a uh, draw over that I was doing over this drawing here. Uh, someone asked me to uh, give them some advice about drawing. Uh, what she, she didn't quite know exactly what was wrong with her character design, so I decided to give her some tips on how to improve it. However, I, I kind of ran out of time because there was so much uh, to just doing uh, the character uh, body. And I never got to the face. So I thought I'd give some tips on drawing the face. And the tips are basically exactly the same ones I gave in the last video, which is get good reference, play with your shapes, uh, draw solid, and know your anatomy. So uh, one of the things... Uh, well, uh, I'll get into uh, the slight variations that go into doing that. Um, hi, my name is Luis Escobar. I'm a storyboard artist on the Simpsons television show. I've been working on the show for over 20 years. And, um, yeah, I, so I thought I'd um, just do a uh, fate, some uh, uh, tips on face drawing. Uh, hopefully this will be a shorter video than the last one. Uh, that kind of, kind of went over a little bit. That's about an hour. I'm going to try to keep that much, much less uh, this time around. Okay, so um, let me make sure I've got a good pen or pencil here. All right, so when it comes to drawing heads, um, uh, well, uh, everything, uh, all the all the rules tend to apply. Um, you're still uh, attempting at first. You're just thinking of things in graphic shapes uh, to make a the ideal the ideal face has. Uh, I, I'm sure you could find many videos out there where they'll tell you how uh, you know split the the brow here and. And this meant this much space between nose and mouth and all this other stuff. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to go against all the, that advice. And I'm going to uh, tell you to go and, and get a little crazy and move the facial features around and, and do um, and, and be um, creative with the placement of the face uh, with, with the eyes and the nose and stuff like that. And you can only tend to you only do that. Um, you could only get really good at doing that uh, if you are familiar with the standard face structures. But that's how. Um, so let me. So, but uh, first, I'm going to look up some reference. So I've got, I already looked up reference here. This I got mostly for the hair because the character in the um, original drawing has uh, long hair. And the character uh, is meant to be male and slightly uh, feminine looking. It has uh, uh, softer features. Now, uh, I'm going to point out here, there, uh, this nose is no nose. It's just a symbol of a nose. Uh, noses are far more complicated than this. Um, I'm sure that this was just uh, placement and stuff like that, but... E it, even though this was just uh, general placement, um, I would have to say uh, there are elements here. Let me go over this a little bit before I even bother with my, my own. Okay. Um, you want to think about when you're drawing heads, these elements here. Now, I highly recommend um, you get uh, Bridgman, uh, the Bridgman's book on, on anatomy, and, and really uh, take a look at that and copy art or the, his, his, his um, just sit down and copy his, his anatomy because he basically breaks down this stuff in such a way that it's very clear and and easy to understand as long as you bother learning 
See, I'm doing this off the top of my head because I've done, I've, I've studied his stuff before, and I even made a video. So it's really fresh in my head right now. There's no structure. Because I copied it, it's much easier for me to recall it. And do it myself. So there's nothing fancy. I'm not doing anything fancy here. I'm basically taking Bridgman's um, construction and just applying it to this. Do you see what I'm do you see what I'm doing here is I'm actually adding some kind of structure to this face which has no structure at all and see how much it improves it right away You've got to know these things As a painter, you absolutely need to know how to draw really, really well. Okay? You can't just assume that if you just put random shapes in there, something magical is going to happen and it's going to automatically just come out looking nice. It's not going to happen. You have to actually sit down and put in the hours and the mileage of copying Bridgman, learning the structures, learning your anatomy. Okay? Now this is just structure. This is actually not a good design. It's just a head drawing. Um, when it comes to actually designing this so that it looks interesting, that's a different thing altogether. <coughs> and then on top of that, when adding values, you're actually adding tone to these structures. And if you don't know what these structures are, you can't really add value. Because you, it, it's kind of like, uh, n you know, if you have a if you have a cube, you know how to add the the tone to it. If you have a sphere, you know how to add the tone to it. But if you do not break down the face into, you know, facets, you won't know what's round, what's blocky. You can't, you can't add, you can't add any uh, tone to to something like this if you don't know what, you know. Uh, here's the nose. The side of the face, the bottom of the nose, you know. So you're 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 breaking, you're you're building. The face is made up of a bunch of blocks, and if you don't know what these blocks are, how are you supposed to paint them? You see what I'm saying? So this is this is you, you see here. This is. This is a side. This is a, a blocky thing. It, you could soften it up a little bit, but it's block. 
this is a block, this is a block, this is round, kind of like a sphere, this is round, so uh, this is a block, this is a block. So that's how you do the shading part. Do you see? This is how you do the shading part, is to break the face down into blocks and spheres so that you know what should be a soft edge. What should be uh, soft here, like, you know. Actually, if we're doing this, then we might as well do this. So that's how you do the shading. Okay. All right. So let's talk about design. See, see. So uh, just just to show you really quick. See, see how there's. It's just tone for tone's sake. There is no explanation through the values that you're putting down of what the stru underlying structure of the face is. Now we want a good design. Let me let me find. Well, here we go. Now when we're talking about design and style, what we're still talking about is what I always talk about in my uh, in my uh, drawing posts about design. So it's still exactly the same thing. We're still talking about um, this. Um, we could have like a standard, hap you know, perfectly symmetrical, happy little face. But to make it interesting, what we want is not to have this perfect balance. What we want is to mess with it. So set the eyes farther apart. Uh, set them closer, move the mouth closer, you know, like just move the face up, change the head shape. So we want variations. That's what, we, that's what we're looking for when making a, an interesting face. Uh, style, uh, people's style is basically just um, uh, the, the design, the way that people vary the standard faces. So we've got this here and I've and again I've got my reference so my reference is here's another slightly feminine looking man long hair reference kind of feminine looking definitely not feminine looking but uh long hair reference long hair reference Long hair reference, feminine looking guy, feminine looking guy. So um, this is kind of like where we're, um, I'm kind of looking at these guys as starting off points as to um, where I might want to take uh, the guy's face. Now all these guys are really good looking. And the problem with good-looking men is that they tend to be very symmetrical and um, ideal. And uh, we, I, I want to make this character slightly less ideal. I want to make him more interesting-looking than just pretty. So I'm trying to see if I can't... Maybe, maybe I'll take this guy. He seems... He seems to be he's got like eyes that for me for some they look a little more sunken in and they're a little further apart maybe this is what i, I want to go with so i'm going to move this over here off screen so i could take a look at it all right <clears throat> let's take a look at this head now this head may be a little bit small. We'll see. I may have to enlarge it. But what I want to do here is 
just play around with with the head shape. So maybe we've seen that the some of the effeminate guys in my reference have really long faces. So let's make their face, this guy's face really long. Now, I'm not trying to be anatomical here. I'm just playing with shapes right now. Now, uh, using the reference of that one guy, maybe I want his eyes to be further apart. I'm just putting in placeholders. These are not the eyes I'm going to, the anatomical, they're not anatomical eyes, I'm just putting shapes in here. Placement. Maybe I'll make him have a pudgy nose. Again, not anatomical. Because the guy in the reference has a bit of a pudgy nose. I do not like that. Okay. Let's try it again. How about... How about a longer nose? Eyes still far apart, but longer nose. I kind of like that a little bit better. I like that a little bit better, just a little bit. Okay, I don't want to labor over this too much, so I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to take this guy, and this is what it's going to be. So I'm going to take this design instead. Long-faced. Okay. The guy in the reference has really sad looking eyes. So maybe I should go with the sad looking eyes. I don't want him to be too elfin. Unless he's supposed to be an elf, but there's no indication that he's supposed to be an elf. So. Okay, so now I'm thinking a little bit more structure. I'm trying to come up with here's the side of the. Here's the eye. Whoa, that eraser was humongous. Um, here's this thing going here. Get the skull in there. The eye socket, I should say. Long nose. But um, as you can see, that I, it's not an idealized face. I'm thinking the rhythms of the face here. Now, all these things that I'm doing on this head. Um, are things that I know from having studied Bridgman and uh, other things. It's not like I'm just taking it out of the air without having studied. Now, I am pushing this face, so it's not the most idealized face. All right, so, um, but I do want a different, different hair here. Now, usually I tend to look at hair reference a ton because hair, to me, is just this mystery like i like like i often don't know what to do with hair 
Um, and I like looking at hair and the, the shapes that hair makes. At the same time, I like to see how the waves and all these other things, how they all work. So if we're using this guy's hair as my reference. Then I know that this kind of this is doing this. This is the origin of the hairs right here. Um, just I'm just gonna draw the the hair line just as a guide for myself because that's where the hair is gonna or <laughs> It's got its origins is in this hairline and then there's this thing happening here with the hair that it goes this way and then it does this and it does this and there's a gap here okay so this is the general hair shape that's going on here just drawing a hair shape not drawing individual strands. It's all a graphic shape that eventually you can pick out and define some of what the hair is doing. But what you want to do with hair is just mostly clump it. Um, think about it like ribbons. It's a good way to go. Like make a, a rib, you know, make a ribbon of hair. See, this is a strand of hair. It looks like a ribbon, you know, and then you kind of, you can break it up into, <laughs> where the plant, the light hits it, so then you can, define the hair a little bit like that. Anyway, that's one way. There's there's lots of different ways. It's not the only way. So let's say that this is kind of the face that we want to go with. So And his face is way too small. Maybe not. Ah, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think I was right the first time. Okay, so let's see. What do I do? What do I do here? Um, I'm going to have to make adjustments, obviously, to the hood again, now that I have a face. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm trying to solve this. I'm going to duplicate this layer here, turn this off, and just... Erase. All right. So I could see what I'm doing. 
Now I'm going to just add this face in here very quickly. Wait, what, uh, what color is this? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. All right. Give him the sad eyes. So I'm drawing, what I'm drawing here is, see how this is a side plane here? This is a side plane, this is the front plane of the eye. I'm not just doing this, because that doesn't describe anything when it comes to the eye. nostrils these line up and this is rhythmically connected to this eye here they come across there's a muscle here and it very nicely just kind of arcs around and creates this really great sh shape that you can use to anchor your eye into its into into the eye socket again just go to bridgman copy bridgman you'll see it there Um, I'll, I'll, I'll point you to the video where I talk about copying Bridgman. There will be a link in the description of this video where you could go to that video as well. The lips. So now I'm kind of refining and defining these things a bit more. And my guy is actually turning out to look a little bit generic, unfortunately. If I want him to look less generic, I would have to play with him a little more, play with his face. I didn't give myself the most uh, the most uh, ideal amount of time. I mean, I, I would really have to just sit here and just like really nail it. I'll give him a slightly softer softer face because he's supposed to be a little bit feminine-ish characteristics. And women tend to be softer. Okay, I don't want to define this ear too much because I'm not I'm not exactly sure if it's going to even be visible. So I want to keep this kind of thing going with the with the hair. I want to keep the hair shape. And then this is probably going to be lost, so I don't want to define it too much. Now I'm going to bring back my hood. You're going to have to make adjustments to this 
head. So now that I know where the head is, the hood would probably do this. Okay. Here's the top of the hood. Here's the side of the hood. See, it's covering up quite a bit of his face. And here's his hair <coughs> that we can't really see much of. But we definitely can see this side of the hair. What was going on with the hood here? Let me see. So we definitely have a clear uh, view of this part of his hair. So. There we go. Get rid of this. Yeah, and then there's whatever shadows you're going to want to put in here. I'm not going to deal with that at the moment. Hmm. Doesn't look like he's his head is on his body. There. I think that's better. Okay, so that's what I would probably do with the head, how I would, um, oh man, I just look, I'm just looking up at this reference and I just realized that I, I didn't mean to, but uh, he kind of looks a little bit like that dude. Well, it is his hair. Anyway, um, I didn't mean to do that. He's I was trying I was talking about how not to be generic and then I actually made a very generic looking dude. My bad. Um but again, um if I wanted to really play around with this uh and make him look unique, I would have to uh just keep playing with his face, trying to move eyes and stuff around and stuff like that uh, spa play with the spacing of his face a bit more uh, whoops I think I could make his eyes a little bit bigger but for some reason it's not Huh, I don't like that. I think there's something off with that eye.
Okay. So you see, there's 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 a lot more to it than just simply. Um, Putting random shapes down, there is a lot of knowledge that needs to be uh, put in there. There needs to be a lot of study of these things. You can't rush these things if you don't. If you can't draw a skull from from your imagination, uh, you don't know enough about um, the skeletal structure of the human face. Um, I. It, it, that that sort of thing and again if you can't just do studies of noses and eyes and uh things like that um it's going it's going to come back and hurt you in the end uh you're going to go i don't understand what i'm doing wrong i don't you should be able to see exactly what is going on why it's not working that sort of thing if you do not it's because there is a huge um gap in your knowledge and uh that needs to be taken care of so my recommendation is again go uh, oh yes and then my recommendation is to go watch the video um where i talk about studying uh, Bridgman and uh, notice notice the, the the here just just alone it's just the the, the head construction I mean the nose construction um, you can you'll get so much out of um, just copying Bridgman Oh, what's this? Uh, commercial. You'll get so much out of just, uh, you know, see the, the, the structure and the construction. So, and then I, I, I show how that stuff works. Um, how studying these things helps you uh, draw better eye. So this is me, again, uh, copying a Bridgman drawing, learning the structure and the construction of uh, a head drawing uh, using Bridgman, because this is eventually what you end up using. So I highly recommend you go to this um, video. Uh, I will link to the video below uh, so you can take a look at this and hear what I've got to say about this. So I hope this has been helpful and I will see you. Oh, um, before I, I talk about that again, um, before I sign out, um, You can, uh, if you if you have found this video uh, useful and uh, informative, um, I would like to uh, encourage you to uh, check out my my Patreon page. My Patreon page is at this link here. You can see it. Um, I encourage you to t check it out and. Um, and uh, see if you can support me. And the the re and and it's not just support, but you also get uh, a few things in, depending on what level you you support. And that would be that uh, at the most base level, um, you get all these videos uh, ahead of time before anybody else gets to see it. And on top of that, um, if you ever want me to make a video for you about anything uh, ask me any question about any uh, anything having to do with drawing or or if you want me to draw something for you so that you can see how I do it 
or you want me to draw over your stuff, or if you want me to draw your favorite D&D character, or whatever it is, uh, go ahead and, and contact and contact me. You don't have to be a patron to be a, to to ask me to do that. What you will get when you're a patron is first dibs. So your question and your drawing and your request will be uh, done before anybody else's. So if you're a patron, you get to be put in the front of the line. If you're not a patron, you can have to wait till all I answer all my patron uh, requests. Uh, so if you just put in a buck, uh, you're automatically a patron and you're automatically put on the top of the list or, or higher on the list. And again, just for a dollar, you also get these videos early and a bunch of other uh, rewards. Um, then uh, high, on higher tiers, you get uh, j high res JPEGs of all the stuff that I do, including something like this, where I will give you the high res JPEGs of this. And a higher reward still, you get the PSD file of this stuff so that you can look through it, play around with it yourself, that sort of thing. But I also uh, put any other artwork that I've done over the week, and this is not just the only artwork I do. It's not just these videos. I do a lot of other artwork for myself. And then you'll be able to see that and get the PSD files for that and the JPEGs and things like that. So I highly encourage you to go to my uh, Patreon page and uh, become a supporter. Okay, and because I'd really, really appreciate it. Um, and it'll help me uh, and motivate me to do more and more videos. All right, well, thank you so very, very, very much. And I will get, and I'll see you next time. All right, bye.